I just want to let you know that your call will be recorded for training purposes. Thank you. Yeah, I hate to take your time. I just had a couple of questions, see if you could help me out here. Yeah, no uh, problem. And we still have a little bit more time on that on that first 30-minute uh, consultation call. I think we had like 10, 15 minutes left. So, uh, okay. shoot. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, well, the, the metal halide bulb did great. Um, it didn't get hot at all. It just worked at the tent. didn't have to set up any other kind of cooling, just a little fan. So I switched to the HPS. And I'm supposed to crank my ballast to 600, right? If it's a 600 HPS bolt? No. Leave it at 400. You can you can adjust it. You I think uh, it's I think it has three settings, right? It has the low, the medium, and yeah. the high. So, Correct. as you go through this uh, entire growing experience, um, that first uh, th there's always that filter that uh, that of decision making you have to you have to roll through, meaning like. Uh -huh. When you when you go into because your whole season will change from winter to winter to summer, and it's going to get hot during certain times of the year at night and cool, and so you're going to have to, yeah. um, in your first mindset, always ask yourself, what temperature do I want to consistently hold in my grow room throughout the entire year, and that's really the name of the game. It's it's not uh, it's uh, of course you don't want to get too hot because you get too hot the plants aren't going to be able to handle it. You get too cold plants are going to slow down in growth and so uh, but anything in between that range really of 65 to 65 to roughly I'd say about 80 88 to 90 sometimes a little warmer depending upon your strains um, yeah. is is the consistency meaning the, pl the plant if you if you keep it at a lower temperature at 70 uh, through the whole grow it's going to do better than if you keep it at 70 and then you change it to 80, 84 yeah. halfway through its grow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just thought that when I switched the bulbs, being that it says 600, that I'm supposed to match the ballast to the bulb. But um, I don't have to. You're saying I can just leave it at 400 even though a 400. Uh oh, something like that. Dimmable. Exactly, exactly. You have complete control, and my ideal situation when I'm growing is not based upon 400 or 600. It's based upon how much temperature do I need in my room to keep that consistent grow room, or how much okay. temperature do I need to reduce. And and if you have more light, your plants are going to yield more. But if you have too much light and it gets too hot, you're you'll reduce your yield. So you're just uh, stunting them same time yeah exactly um, so I, I i didn't know i could adjust that to a lower um wattage with the 600 bulb i thought they just had to both go six and six and i think maybe i can try lowering that see if it lowers the temperature you know especially because it's kind of at the moment but um i've got other things like i pull the reflectors off from the inside to let a little more air go and suck more air up in there um and see if that makes a difference uh, does that sound right? Yes, you're saying uh, to pull more air through the through the lamp. Oh no no no! From the tent, from the bottom of the tent, you know I've got. Some... Oh, okay, got you. Pull more air through the tent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got um, the Velcro little um, things that go over the sides. Just kind of rip them off, and that way more it can suck in more air, more of the AC air from the room. Yes and no. Okay, so uh, because you're dealing with you because you're dealing with light pollution, uh, those uh, those tents and those flaps are really there to uh, increase that ventilation, but also take in consideration that you're going to be you might be dealing with light pollution. So as long as your outside environment isn't leaking light or it's dark as well, you can adjust those flaps to stay open or closed to again help help create that consistent grow environment for the temperature in your grow room. Okay. Um, gotcha. Well, um, okay. Because the light pollution, sorry, go ahead. Uh -huh. That light pollution, uh -huh. it's a big deal. I, I'm, I'm letting you know. If you, if your plants get, uh, in, in especially in flowering, um, yeah. uh, they, if you go into flowering, your plants will, uh, could, will have a high likelihood of hermaphroditing when they get enough stress. And uh, you always just want to be uh, very. Take into consideration any any level of light pollution. Um, 
You mean when it needs a total darkness? Yes, when it needs a total darkness. It really needs a consistent uh, total darkness. Total dark. So that's why it's there, so you can keep it completely dark. Exactly. Those things. Okay, yeah, well, those I just tried that this morning. I can put those back on. Um, yeah, we don't want any amphetamine in there. We're praying for little girls. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, but I guess I can try lowering the temperature on the ballast from 6 to 4 and give that a try and see if that um, changes anything in the uh, in the temperature of the tent. And or the middle. More cooler days. Or the middle. I have, it on the, I have it on the middle, on the 600. Okay, so. Gotcha. There's also a 400, one more. Gotcha. Lower. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, that, that sound right? Yes, absolutely. There's the supercharge. Sometimes, sometimes it does uh, 400, uh, like a 440, a five something, and then a 600. Sometimes it does like a 440, a 600, and supercharge. So occasionally they switch around. So uh, just hearing me, uh, hearing what you, how you're describing, absolutely take it down to the 400 because that consistent grow room, your plants will yield more with a consistent grow room than with more yeah, light kind of hot. and too hot. I have to slide them back out. Um, they seem to, you know, they kind of grew up on the patio outdoors, and um, the, they seem to like it. And when I put them in the tent, they just kind of changed a little bit. There's probably the fluctuation of temperatures and being like right under the direct light. Okay, and just to, feel, um, like 12 to 16 inches. Just to get a little better understanding of your uh, grow situation you're are you growing outdoors and then you're bringing them into the tents at night no it was the other way around it used to, no it was outdoors but i didn't have this tent so you know i received it from me i ordered it i set it up and now i put them in but actually there was one that i started when i got the tent and then i started really small and that one's joined it's um it's friends from the outside garden Got gotcha. you. I brought the outside garden inside because it might rain this afternoon. Okay, okay. So, just to take into well, consideration, the uh -huh. they, 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 I know this might sound funny. I know this might sound funny, but I'm just going to give you an example. It's, it's like, it's like you have, you have plants that that grew up in the hood, and you have plants that grew up in Beverly Hills. Okay. And I know that I know that might sound a little weird, but when when sometimes sometimes the 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 plants that when you move them from the tent outdoor, most of the time, like ninety ninety nine percent of the time, I see them explode. But occasionally, when you move them from the t uh, outside in the tent, I've seen those not do so well. On a, tr a yeah, transition that's, back that's, inside. That's my story right now. Exactly. I would encourage I would encourage you to in that situation to keep those plants outdoors, but to just maybe slide them underneath your um, uh, underneath something that the water isn't directly hitting them. Oh yeah, I've got that thing. Okay? There won't be any water. And then um, also. Okay. One more thing for those outdoor plants is you really have to be concerned with the water starting about week three and a half, maybe maybe beginning of week four. After that, you should be concerned with the water. But be, but before, if it's raining and you're within the first basically first four weeks into flowering, the plants are going to be just fine. It's like the plants raining on still on your veg. They the flowers haven't formed. See what what creates mold or the reason why the when the rain falls, it's the it's like the dew. It's the expansion of the mo the air mo the the water molecule in the flower. Yeah. Then the mo the moisture can't release, and so it expands and then contracts and expands and contracts, and that's what creates that environment for the mold. So in those first four weeks, if, if it's just raining or dew or something along those lines, 
It not not a big deal. Really, the the ideal thing for those plants would be just to clean up that that one third in the internal one third of the your crop because it it's going to get fairly bushy, and just allowing your 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 plant uh, to per, uh, uh, to perspirate, you know, just to give that that when it's when the when it's expanding from a water molecule to a gas, just uh, allow that there to be airflow so that the air can 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 pull that moisture away from your plant. And that's what's really gonna set yeah. your outdoor crop up for success. After four weeks, be more yeah. concerned with the rain. Uh, yeah, they, they don't get wet much. I keep them okay. dry, they got a little awning over them. But I'm gonna have to um, put them back out there because it makes sense. They grew up out there, they like it out there. Mm -hmm. Putting them back in the tent, they're not, they don't seem to transition well. Mm -hmm. But the one I started in there, it's just a different color and everything. So that one's going to stay there. We'll see how that does. And um, But, hey, thank you for your time, dude. Um, I still got you there for that PayPal. It's going to happen. It's just um, let me get my, my gardening straight here, and we'll chat later. I appreciate that, brother. Thank right, you so you. much. And we also definitely care about the success of your grow all the way through as well, no matter what. And thanks for all the info. No problem, brother. We'll talk to you next time. Yes, sir. Hey everyone. So as you can see, uh, we're here to support your success. In the next few months, we're going to be changing our website. Uh, although, if you would like, uh, this person got uh, by pack. Uh, picking up a grow package he got a free 30 minute consultation you've heard part one and now part two uh, a few weeks later calling in uh, a little bit later on using up those last few minutes of his call uh, on those free 30 minutes he's getting so much value in those 30 minutes so he's, so other grow grow locations they sell you the equipment we we sell you the equipment but we also teach you how to how to fish uh, we just don't give you a fish, and if if, if anyone hears that parable and, and from the Bible or from maybe you you went you went to church, you know if you can teach a man to fish versus feeding a man to fish, you you teach him how to feed himself for the rest of your life, and and that's what we do. Our our mission here is to help you grow. Uh, if you come down here, if you purchase just a, a package or just come over to Grow Help, click on it and select what you. Uh, what other what other things you you might be interested in, whether it's grow tent packaging, grow room design, and, or grow room consulting. A few other um, few other thanks so much and have a beautiful day.